In this video, I'm going to introduce the equilibrium constant Kp. So you can see I've written up there for gaseous equilibria, it's actually more convenient to use partial pressures of reactants and products instead of equilibrium concentrations measured in moles per decimeter cubed. So hopefully, before you've watched this video, you've seen Kc in operation. So that's using those equilibrium concentrations. So instead, we're going to derive an equilibrium constant using partial pressures of gases. So before I go into a specific example, I'm just going to go through the generic formula for Kp. So if we've got A moles of A, B moles of B, in equilibrium with C moles of C and D moles of D, then the Kp expression would look like this. So the lowercase letters are the balancing numbers. You can see they've been raised to powers. We've got the um, product on the top, the reactants on the bottom, just like we have with Kc. But instead of square brackets, remember square brackets are used for moles per decimeter cube concentrations, we've got round brackets. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use the Haber process to explain what we are dealing with here. So I've got the gaseous nitrogen, three moles of gaseous hydrogen, in equilibrium with two moles of gaseous ammonia. So at equilibrium, we've got some of all of these substances contained within this container. So in terms of partial pressures, the equilibrium constant Kp is equal to the partial pressure of the ammonia squared all over the partial pressure of the nitrogen multiplied by the partial pressure of the hydrogen cubed. So hopefully you can see similarities with Kc. Remember in essence equilibrium constants are the concentration at equilibrium of the products over the reactants. Well that's what we've got here. Ammonia is the product and these are the reactants. But instead of equilibrium concentrations we've got the partial pressures. The partial pressure can be measured in pascals or kilopascals and you'll notice that we don't use square brackets, we've got these round brackets. And of course it follows that if Kp is greater than 1, we're going to have more of the products to reactants at equilibrium, whereas if we've got a less than 1 Kp, we've got more reactants to products. And the final thing I need to say is obviously, you know, what do we mean by partial pressure? Well, the total pressure that all of these components exert um, is made up from the partial pressure. So all that is, is the individual pressures of the components in the mixture. So you could think about it as, you know, what would be the pressure if we just had the nitrogen in this container by itself. So the partial pressure is the pressure of an individual component of the equilibrium. So we'll go straight into a calculation. I've changed the top of the board there. So at 640 Kelvin, notice we're specifying the temperature, the partial pressure of the hydrogen is 40 kilopascals, the partial pressure of the nitrogen is 10 kilopascals, and the partial pressure of the ammonia is 15 kilopascals. Calculate Kp at this temperature and state its units. So if you want to have a go, pause the video and I'll go through the answer. So you can see I've just substituted the numbers in for the partial pressures. We already had the expression on the board from before and I'm getting a numerical value for Kp at 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4. So the units now, if you think about it, the partial pressures are all measured in kilopascals. So we would have kilopascals squared on the top divided by kilopascals to the power 4 on the bottom. It's got kilopascals times kilopascals cubed. So effectively, we've got 1 over kilopascals squared. So that would be kilopascals 
to the negative 2 as the units. So the next important point to make is just like Kc, Kp is constant at constant temperature. So that's why on the calculation we've just done, I actually specified that the temperature was 640 Kelvin. So with that in mind, let's suppose the partial pressure of the nitrogen was doubled. How does the equilibrium respond to deal with that? So obviously if we're going to increase something that's on the bottom of this Kp expression, that means this whole term is going to get bigger, the denominator term, which will effectively make Kp smaller. So Kp, or the equilibrium, sorry, has to respond to make Kp back to what it was. Remember, Kp has to be constant. So how does it do that? Well, it has to make this term bigger. This partial pressure of ammonia has to get bigger. And so effectively, to do that, the equilibrium has to move over to the right-hand side. So we're going to end up with more ammonia, which will give us a higher partial pressure for the ammonia, and that will get Kp back to where it was, and then the system would be back in equilibrium. So we'll try a typical question on that now. So you can see I've just put the information back on the board at 640 Kelvin. We had those partial pressures, which gave us the Kp value of that. So in blue, you can see we need to calculate the partial pressure of the ammonia if the partial pressure of nitrogen was doubled while keeping the partial pressure of hydrogen the same and obviously we're still at 640 Kelvin. So if you want to have a go at that and then I'll go through the answer. So obviously the first thing we need to do is write down the expression for Kp which we've seen a few times already. The fact that it's still at 640 Kelvin means that Kp is still 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4. So we're trying to find out the partial pressure of the ammonia and we know that the partial pressure of nitrogen has been doubled from 10 so it's now at 20 and the partial pressure of the hydrogen has been kept at 40 kilopascals. So we need to rearrange this now and solve for the partial pressure of ammonia. And there's my answer, 21.17 kilopascals. So the last thing we'll look at in this introductory video for Kp is the effect of temperature on Kp. So again, I'm sticking with the Haber process. So written out the reaction equilibrium equation there. And the enthalpy change for the forward reaction is minus 92 kilojoules per mole. So it's obviously exothermic. And again, you can see written up here, we've got the Kp expression for this equilibrium. So let's suppose the temperature of the system was increased. How would that impact on the value for Kp? So the thing we need to remember, it's what we've been shown before, that an increase in temperature will favour the endothermic direction or the endothermic reaction, which in this case is the reverse reaction. So this equilibrium will respond by moving more to the left-hand side. So in other words, the partial pressure of the ammonia is actually going to drop because we're going to have fewer moles of it. So the partial pressure of ammonia drops, but the partial pressures of nitrogen and hydrogen are going to increase. So what's the upshot of all of that? Well, if this term's getting smaller and these are getting bigger, obviously the answer or the value of Kp is going to get smaller. And so therefore, what's that telling us? If Kp is smaller, it means the equilibrium is more on the reactant side than the product side, which of course ties in with the fact that the increase in temperature favours the endothermic direction. And just so we've covered everything, I'll go through the reverse of that. So let's suppose the temperature was decreased. Now that's going to favour the exothermic direction. And so we're going to expect the equilibrium to shift that way. 
So what's that going to do to our KP expression? Well, we're going to have a large number of moles of ammonia. So this is going to increase. Well, what's going to happen to the moles of these? They're going to decrease. And so the upshot of that is if this number is getting bigger and these are getting smaller, KP is going to increase which backs up the fact that the equilibrium is moving across to the right hand side.